It's Talia. And Christy. And we are here for another edition of Cooking the Book. Now in this episode, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're actually gonna cook this time instead of bake. And we're also gonna drink, right? Yeah. It's like cooking and drinking the book. Well, Christy's gonna cook and I'm gonna eat it. Well, you're gonna mix drinks, which is actually the most important job here. Yeah, so. I agree. <laughs> we do have two special assistants here today to help us eat and drink. It's Lucas and I! Oh, what a surprise. I know. <laughs> I know what you were guessed? expecting, but hey. Okay, let's get started. Christy, what are you cooking today? Today we are cooking rarebit. What is rarebit? Rarebit is beer cheese over toast, basically. Ooh. So in October, we read We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson, and they randomly mentioned a meal that they ate called rarebit, and I never heard of it before. So I looked it up, and it sounds delicious. So we're going to do it. I remember that part. He was talking about how he thought the poison would be in the rarebit. Yes. Poison could have been in anything. Are we going to get poison made. in ours? Probably. If you're lucky. The Wait, cool if I'm lucky. <laughs> we are making non-poisoned rarebit. Fun fact, weird name, right? There's a couple of theories about where the name came from. Cheese on bread is so popular that it spread like rabbits. <laughs> the second um, theory also has to do with rabbits. The rich ate rabbit a lot, and this is an alternative for the poor who want to eat something tasty and I guess pretend that it's rabbit even though it's nothing like rabbit in any way. No rabbits were harmed in the making of this video. We are using butter, flour, salt, pepper, dry mustard, Worcestershire sauce, hot pepper sauce, whole milk, beer. Traditionally it's porter beer, but we couldn't find that, so we're using Guinness. And white cheddar cheese, preferably Welsh, but anything you can find is fine. First step is to get the cheese out of the plastic. <laughs> Point it away from you. That's a, a good, good tip, good cooking tip. Christy versus cheese. Who will win? I will win. <laughs> cheese. Get it? I'm always scared I'm gonna shred my finger. Me too. People say not to get the pre-shredded cheese if you can help it, just because they have to put like preservatives and stuff in there. Gus, Gus, do you want some cheese? We're right down to the last, the last bit. <laughs> this is really taking forever. Let's check in on the boys. What are y'all talking about? We're talking about uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 and 3 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah. Okay, bye. And we're back. We're almost done. <laughs> the final cheese has been grated. Yeah, we're just gonna call it. Let me put in our bread. And goodbye, bread. And while our toast is toasting, we're going to melt butter. It's on low. The recipe calls for a quarter cup, but we're doubling the recipe, so we're doing a half a cup, which is one whole stick. Half a cup of flour. I have a dry measure, I guess we should have done that. It's about the same, right? I mean, some people say it's not, but I think it is. Mm. This is how you know it's gonna be good. Whole stick of butter. Fancy, yummy, delicious, cheesy bread. What could go wrong? Yeah, one of the recipes I looked at um, called it an open face grilled cheese. Well, and there's beer involved, so. I read that you don't have to put beer in, you can just do the milk or uh, heavy cream. But if you can put beer. <laughs> Toast is done. So we are blending in the flour, half a teaspoon of salt, doubling it. This is a lot of salt. How much? That's a lot. Oh, that is a lot of salt. We're not gonna do that. And a quarter teaspoon of pepper, but again, doubling it, so. That's a lot of pepper, I'm not doing that. So a half a teaspoon of dry mustard, half a teaspoon of Worcestershire. Is that how you pronounce it? Wor Worcestershire? Wor Worcestershire? I don't know. Worcestershire? West Worcestershire. How do you pronounce Worcestershire? It's Winchester Street. <laughs> no. It's not. Worcestershire. Worst. Worst. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I was saying it earlier. Worcestershire. Wor Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Is it the same as the city? I found this on the web for how to say Worcestershire. Who has an American Siri? Australian, South African, Irish, and Christy doesn't use Siri. <laughs> So I guess we'll never know how you pronounce it. This. Four drops <laughs> hot sauce. Try to get the flour bits out. <laughs> bits. Haven't you ever thought on so many occasions that it'd be like so helpful to be an octopus? How's our spicy thick butter? I think we're about ready to move on to the next step. 
But really we're just trying to cook the flour so we don't have raw flour taste and I think we have done that. Two cups of milk. We are mixing this in, cooking it until it boils. We were technically supposed to take it off the heat and then pour the milk in slowly and then put it back on the heat, but I'm too lazy for that. Ooh, it's thickening. Yay! And the beer's supposed to be room temperature. It's fine. As soon as it starts boiling, we'll put the beer in. I love that Ooh. sound. Yep. <laughs> we're doing a cup of this. Beer. Oh. We might not wait for it to boil. Slowly mix in the beer. This smells interesting. This is a lot of beer. I'm not mad about it. I mean, I've made regular beer cheese before and whenever you add the beer, there's always a moment where you think you've ruined the dish. Based on that experience, I'm going to say we're still good. Right? It's gonna be delicious. We're ready for the cheese! Cheese! The cheese! It smells like beer and melted cheese, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just not what I was thinking this was gonna look like. Like the color of the beer really affected the color. It looks like gravy. It's cheese beer gravy. Oh, biscuit. I helped. I know you did it. <laughs> We're ready. <gasps> this is the moment. What are we gonna do? We are gonna put this beer cheese on top of this toast. I don't know how much is right, so we're just gonna wing it. <laughs> it's kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> this looks kind of gross, but it's gonna taste awesome. Okay, okay. So we take our gravy toast, and now we pour, ah! Yay! Mm. <gasps> Rare bit. I think we'll need forks and knives. How do the Welsh people do it? So this is what her uncle right. wanted in the book. He said it would have been easy for it to have been baked it. into the rarebit. Having made rarebit, do you find that it would have been easy to bake poison into this? Oh yeah. So factually accurate. Let's do this. Okay. You are massacring that. What would the Welsh think okay. of this? I'm actually part Welsh. Well, what would you think of this? I think it's fine. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty good. This is really good. It's very interesting. You can definitely taste the Worst, 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 just, this is, just sure, sure. you can taste that, you can taste the beer, you can taste the cheese. This yeah. is a good thing to make on the holiday break. It is definitely a good cold day, Ooh, good, good yes. fire, and a book. It was really easy to make. Yay, Chrissy! Yeah. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> <laughs> but you ate yours. We will be back after a short break. And we're back for part two. What are we making? We are making an interview with the vampire themed martini. This is a dessert cocktail, so it is going to be very, very sweet. I'm not a bartender or a mixologist, so we'll see what happens. It also looks like it's gonna knock us out immediately. Hi, buddy. We have our martini glasses and our shaker and our measurer, which seems important because we're gonna be using four different liquors. Vanilla vodka, whipped cream vodka, chocolate liqueur, Aperol, grenadine, and dark chocolate syrup. Welcome to Talia's bar. I don't know what I'm doing, so let's just start mixing things in. I filled my martini shaker halfway with ice, and I've got the martini glasses chilling. So first we have a lovely whipped cream vodka, which sounds already like a hangover. <laughs> hey, remember that time that I said I wasn't a bartender? Just reminding you. So we put two ounces of the whipped cream, one ounce of our vanilla vodka. What I'm measuring out for right now makes two. So I'm gonna do this twice. Yay. Now we add an ounce of our chocolate liqueur. I will be honest, I got the cheapest one. If you're mixing stuff, I am a big believer that you don't need it to be really nice. Really nice liquor is for when you're drinking it straight. If you're mixing this all together, especially with chocolate, just get what's cheap. You can quote me on that. Aperol or Aperol? I'm gonna say Aperol. It is a slightly bitter citrus liqueur. Oh my God, it smells like Delsum. You know that orange cough syrup? Oh, wow. You know, good chefs always taste their ingredients. Let the audience mm. smell. It smells good. It's like yeah, it doesn't smell it's, bad. It's definitely cough medicine, but like the kind that they trick kids into thinking tastes good. So we're gonna put a fourth. That's close. Half an ounce 
of grenadine and this is where we're going to get a lot of that really awesome red color so that it looks like blood so you got to take the wrapper off <laughs> christy you like sweet drinks i feel like the more sugar in a drink the more likely i am to get a hangover oh yeah do you just get hangovers more often yes <laughs> that's what i like do you like having hangovers no the sweet <laughs> drinks is what i like now Yay! I don't want to put too much chocolate because that sounds like it will not be good. I'm going to try and just do a little drizzle on the edge and let it run down so it looks like blood drippies. That's like a lot of chocolate though. That's kind of drippy. Yeah, it looks perfect. Oh yeah, see that looks great. You're always so supportive and encouraging and I really appreciate it. It smells really good. That's kind of red. No, I think that looks great. Oh, look. That kind of looks like blood. Yeah. Nope, that's uneven. <laughs> Here's the test. Just like the little one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get lit. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> How many different kinds of alcohol did you say were in this? I can taste them, all four of them, but it's really good. It's very sweet. Very Absolutely sweet. a dessert cocktail. This is for after you've already eaten all of your courses. You've hung out for a while. Now you're sitting down to watch a movie, chat with your friends. You are done for the night. I can taste the chocolate. It mm -hmm. was good. I feel like this was another successful cooking slash drinking the book Jeez. to literarily wasted. Aww. <laughs> so much chocolate and so much alcohol. It was based off of a red velvet cake martini. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for another Cooking the Book. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. I helped. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing? This is our beer cheese. Mm-hmm. <laughs>